to order, even though we don't have a form. And maybe someone will come in the door. Um, so we can't really review the minutes. Or uh, they actually, we haven't had a chance to because they haven't been sent to us uh, over the internet. So we'll have to do that at the next meeting. Right, Bob Robert? Mm -hmm. But you do have a printed copy in your hand. Um, then we would move on to the treasurer's report. There's no treasurer's report this month. That will be helpful. How about Since July and August? Form. Nothing. <laughs> um, we, we had a preliminary hearing for 1831 Main Road, and that has been withdrawn. 1835, I believe. 1835, you're right. Mm -hmm. So um, they will be applying for uh, a certificate of appropriateness at the next meeting. They weren't, weren't able to get their information together. Yes, I will close my eyes to when it arrives. She doesn't think she's going to. Wednesday is our deadline for the next meeting. But Yes, I know. The, uh, the builder called me, and I did explain that. So he's trying. Yeah, well, I will get the letter out. Yeah, if it comes in, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. assuming something comes in. Well, yes. Um, right, exactly. I know what you mean. Um, monitors reports. Uh, uh, so M Michael and I met with um, uh, people at 1868 Main Road. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Derbyshire is the contractor. Um, and so we met with him to look at what he was doing with the window trim and, and uh, seemed, seemed fine to us. Um, and then Michael met with uh, one of the owners and I was not present at that meeting, but um, they, uh, they discussed some things, including a, a chimney cap, which I think would be similar to the chimney cap that we approved for the house next door, very low profile. Right. Um, and I think he probably discussed, Michael discussed some of this with you. He did, he did. Yeah. And um, it seemed to me that it didn't have to come before the commission. So when minor changes, monitors can make their own right. choice. Major, of course, it has to come back to us. So, right. and the project looks like it's going very well. I drove by there the it other is, day. It is, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And, they, and they've been very good about keeping us in the loop. And, good. and uh, good. I think it's... So this is about a renovation of a house built around 1950 or something. Mm. Um, in the district, uh, and it's the house was built in 1950. It's a colonial style house, so they're just bringing it back to the way it used to look with modern materials. And it's been gutted out inside, and so it's all gonna, it's just really all going to be redone. Refresh my memory. Is this the one on the corner of Diff Road? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. I think. Yeah. 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 They're doing a nice job. Uh, we also have something going on at a, up on. Um, uh, what's the cross? Oh, going the other direction. Cape Bile. Is that, I don't think that started yet. I did talk to the person. Uh, it was approved. It, yes. It was approved, but we haven't. Um, I think uh, 31 I Cape Bile. Hmm? 31 Cape Bile. Yeah. And it was yeah. Garrett and Beverly are the right. monitors. Yeah, okay, they, well, they I, did, I did happen to see the person uh, mm -hmm. who owns that, and it hadn't started yet, so I'm sure you'll get a call from them. Right. Okay, now um, we can move on. Uh, Rudd had asked me to um, add, make an addition to the agenda under new business, and it is the American Legion Hall. Uh, and we have um, presenters here tonight, but I'd just like to tell you a little bit about it. We, Rudd and I and Betty Slade went over to meet with these guys. And um, the American Legion Hall is a, a one-room schoolhouse from the 19th century. This is regarding CPA funds. And whatever is done there has to come before us for our review. Where is it, Bill? This, the roof's here. It was, it was built in the uh, 1800s. Like, yeah, no, but where? I mean, uh, Sandler Road. It, uh, it's uh, uh, 489 uh, 
the Stanford Road, about halfway down, just past the uh, Lady Grace Church, opposite side of the road. Oh, look for it was, tomorrow. But it was then moved across the street from the same side oh. as Lady Grace. Oh. Okay. So when we I've met, what, what, what you can, I just want to just review what we saw there, sure. because I hadn't seen it before, Tony, yep. uh, and um, it's really an important building. I mean, a one-room school yeah, no, here, so. we've, got, we've got the Wolf Pit School, and we also have the old um, Belt School, and this is another one. Uh, and it's fortunate that it's owned by the town. They lease it uh, to the American Legion. And so, because it's a town building, it's preserved um, and um, under our review. So, um, it was moved across the street on a high uh, uh, f uh, basement foundation, and the basement is used by the uh, American Legion for their meetings. In the upstairs, uh, it will be used as a meeting hall uh, for the neighborhood, and it was restored years ago from what Betty Slade told me, uh, and it was restored using, I believe, CPC funds or other funds, and anyway, it was done by uh, some people here who knew what they were doing, and they restored the windows, it has a stage, and it's a beautiful building, all intact from uh, the 19th century. Uh, so. They're here tonight, Tony Vieira, and I've forgotten your Ed name. O'Hara. What was your name Ed again? O'Hara. O'Hara. Okay, could you uh, present what's going on there? Again, I'm Tony Vieira, uh, commander of the American Legion, and Ed is uh, uh, the head of the executive committee for the American Legion and a former commander as well. I do have some pictures if I could bring Paul. Oh, yeah, sure. Paul. In terms of the, uh, the structure of the building, I'll, I'll refer to them later on, but I'll leave them with you. <clears throat> as far as the building itself, it was uh, used as a one-room schoolhouse at the end of the 1800s and in early 1900. And then it was condemned by the um, Board of Higher Education in, or the Board of Education in Boston uh, because it, uh, the floor wasn't adequate. There were a lot of de deficiencies in the building. The town kept the building though and, and actually continued to use it for about 35 students in that end of town on Sanford Road and uh, pretty much down to Route 6. And it was about 1912 when the uh, North Westport School was built. It was a bigger building, it was closer to Route 6. Uh, it's possibly now where the, uh, the exit is for uh, um, uh, 195 and Route 88 in that area there, that connection. So uh, the, the town just left the building there for a while. Uh, after World War I, there were a number of veterans who were meeting actually in this building uh, and uh, also at the, uh, the town hall, um, which was down the street at uh, where the uh, St. John's uh, Church uh, has their CCD classes on Sunday, the white building. That was the original town hall. So early on, that's where the veterans participated in, in their activities as well with the town. When this building uh, was going to be kind of, you know, looked at it in terms of what they were going to do with it, the family that owned it was uh, on the street, the opposite side of the street of where it stands now, as you can see. Um, the, um, the family, was, I think they were talking about destroying it, the town had no use for it. So the, uh, the veterans decided to move it across the street on some town-owned property that the town had offered that they would do that. And the veterans did the repairs on it. Uh, they lifted it up, moved it across the street, turned it around, facing to the uh, east side. Um, and what you're seeing there now, as, it, as you see the face of the building, the front of the building, that's pointing east. And the veterans used it during the uh, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, quite a bit, and they used it upstairs. They had built these stages themselves. They had done a lot of work on it. Uh, but they didn't do anything with the windows, and by that time, the, the, the roof was in need of repair. And we had, uh, at that point, as a town, had decided that um, it was a, a value for a veterans group and value for community use, and veterans uh, certainly uh, kind of managed that uh, process. But the expense was not absorbed by the town. It really, once it was moved across the street, the expense was picked up by the American Legion. Until we got into the roof and we got into the, the, the uh, 
some of the other work that needed to be done. And at that time, we talked to uh, the Historical Commission, the Historical Society, get some advice in terms of how to do some of the repairs with the up fl upstairs floors, some of the cupboards, uh, some of the side uh, in, in the stage. Uh, you can see the picture upstairs now is a hardwood floor, and the stage is a hardwood floor. Uh, all those were, were done initially uh, by veterans uh, in the labor part of it and by fundraising that they had done. But we went to CPC as an organization uh, to do the roof, and they were very helpful. Uh, we got funding for the roof, and some years later we uh, did the windows, and uh, that was done under the direction of uh, um, uh, Geraldine and uh, some of the other folks uh, in terms of how best to do that. Uh, there was some talk about the entrances to the building and how we we're going to do that under handicap accessibility, um, but was never done. And one of the challenges we have now is utilizing upstairs um, to try to get to the building and see it's pretty high off the ground. Uh, there are stairwells, but they're uh, in need of repair. Uh, the only other uh, funds that the town had, had participated in uh, was the uh, the septic system. When we raised the building, we actually put in two small bathrooms, not handicapped accessible. We're going back in the 1930s, 1940s. But they were indoor plumbing, so to speak. It was the first time the building ever had that. And when we did that, we uh, uh, had a septic uh, concern, so we put in a tight tank outside, and that was funded through the town as well. So all those totaled to about 94, 95,000 that the town over the years has have contributed with the American Legion in maintaining the building. All the other expenses were covered through the American Legion and continue to this day to be covered. Just this past year, we had to do some major repairs with the heating system in the building. Uh, we had to do some repairs with the, uh, the water pump, and we, we absorbed those as well. Uh, it's also been used as a voting precinct. Uh, I'm not sure the year that we started using it as a voting precinct, yeah, but it's quite a few years. Uh, and uh, we moved it recently uh, because of the handicap, handicap accessibility in the last couple of years, just before COVID uh, basically took hold, we um, moved it down the street to Our Lady Grace Church in their hall uh, because it was accessible uh, for the voting population. The last time we had voting there, we had a serious problem with the plumbing. And at that point, uh, the town was prepared to handle the plumbing part of it. We got in as veterans and, and tried to do the repairs and di did them, but there was a delay in terms of the voting process. So that wasn't adequate to, to count on that going forward unless we did some upgrades within the building. Uh, we held off until uh, um, recently uh, talking about how we we're going to do those repairs. One, it was financing, and secondly, it was a question of um, handicap accessibility had to be part of those repairs. Right now, we're looking at utilizing upstairs because folks have talked to us about, um, it, as a community center, using it for different activities from dance, uh, there's a t couple of groups, I guess, that uh, take uh, their children to uh, Somerset and Swansea for uh, dance purposes. They could use the, the stage for that. There's some scouting groups that have asked for opportunities. There's folks that have different family get-togethers that uh, their ho homes are not adequate, and they'd love to utilize the community space for that as well. And we're open to that, except that we really have put a, although the, the building department has been advising us on these areas, we kind of, um, unitarily decided we weren't going to use upstairs until we did something with the access to the building because uh, Betty actually walk, walked on one of the stairs that we were quite concerned with. We were trying to catch her before she came that day, Ed and I, uh, because we weren't sure that they were safe. Uh, so that's the kind of issue we're talking about. The front stairs are pulled from the, uh, the door. They were nailed to the side of the building. They've been pulled off a little bit. So there needs to be some major work. We looked at uh, elevators. We looked at ramps. Uh, we looked at... Uh, lifts, uh, different things for access to the building. And we uh, found that the cost associated with, with access outside is fairly expensive. Uh, certainly when you get into elevators and lifts, not only the acquisition initially and the uh, initial inst uh, uh, installation of the, of the uh, elevators, but the ongoing cost of maintaining them, the hydraulic system that's associated with it. So we, we kind of moved quickly to ramps. And, and different type, as you see here in the front of this building, access with a ramp. And we've got a couple of contractors that are looking at that. Now, we want to maintain the building the way it looked as much as possible in, in its early history. And, and so we uh, had talked to uh, both uh, uh, Mr. Kendall and also uh, Mr. Lawrence. 
uh, with Betty and, and trying to get some advice in terms of what we should do outside. Obviously, we need the shingle the out the exterior of the building at the same time. Not the roof. Roof's in good shape, but we need to do the sides. Did the windows, as I mentioned earlier, but the, 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 the shingles need to be done. We thought we'd do that all at the same time outside. And to do that, we've kind of settled on uh, trying to do, based on, on recommendations, I think actually, uh, Bill, you, I think you were the one who told me this first, was the uh, look at yellow uh, um, cedar shingles uh, as an option. And we did that. Uh, we're getting prices on it now. And so uh, uh, right now, I'm thinking, unless people would recommend something different, is to, to uh, re-shingle the outside once we do the handicap accessibility to those two doors. Uh, and those would be ramp styled. Uh, we would reshingle it as well. And so from that standpoint, if you go and you look at those pitches uh, facing the road here on the left side, which is now the south side of the building, but the, the left side, there's an entrance to the bottom area. That's not handicap accessible. We have a number of uh, veterans that are in the late 70s, 80s, and uh, just getting in and out of the building is a problem. Uh, and we're looking at doing something that's not too fancy, but at least has some steady ground going into the building and having a door that people could go in with walkers uh, as they get into the building. The two bathrooms that were built many, many years ago um, are back to one another. They're very small. Um, and our, our idea is we've had a couple of contractors look at them. We could actually knock out a wall and put in one handicap accessible bathroom there. And, and that's our goal. So as you walk into the building on the left side, if you're walking in with a, a any kind of chair, any kind of assistant at all, uh, for people that, that need that kind of situation, we need to have adequate space to do that. So there'll be some minor stuff going into the building. Uh, similar to what we're doing here, again, I, I'll refer to downstairs, there's a cement uh, ramp that's being uh, applied now um, on this building going into the uh, lower level. And so we're looking at something that's probably, uh, you know, four feet by six feet in cement outside with a new door going into the building. And uh, we were going to replace a door that wouldn't have any glass in it just because of the safety standpoint where we're not there all the time. So it's similar to you, the door you see in, in the uh, picture there. And we're asking for help. We're asking for advisement on this. We're working with CPC. We're comfortable uh, with where we're heading with it, but we're a little uh, less comfortable with this idea. Excuse me, let's shut this off. With the uh, idea of trying to uh, uh, move forward with this without uh, respectfully doing the history of, of the building. Uh, and we went through the town hall uh, reports, uh, the town reports, I should say, but they're located in the town hall. Some of the older ones, uh, th th when we go back and forth, there's, uh, depending on which year you're looking at, sometimes it looks like we're renting the building, sometimes it looks like the town has voted to, the, the town meeting has voted to turn the building over to the very Legion. Um, so depending on uh, the 1930s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, you get different uh, opinions in terms of who owns the building. We're very comfortable saying the town owns the building. We see it as a community center. Uh, there are some members that would kind of question that based on the history from before and so forth, but the documentation is, is kind of uh, uh, lacking to some degree in terms of how it was handled. There's no question it was a town-owned building. It was called the um, Early on, when it was first built, it was building number school building number 15, and then it was referred to uh, as the Sanford Road School, directly across the street from where it stands now. Matter of fact, the property that was on, it, it laid on for many years was uh, owned by uh, Roger Olivia, who was a plumber in town and an American Legion uh, a member as well, who's passed now. But his family goes back and. Uh, it, it ties in with the Borden family, and the Borden family and the Sanford family were the two largest landowners in Westport in the 1800s and early 1900s. So we're, we're confident about all those parts of the history. Um, we're, we're confident we have records of in terms of the repairs that were done. That they, there seems to be a picture of uh, jacking up the building on one side of the road and moving it around to the other side of the road. I've never seen that picture, uh, but, but we've looked for it. Uh, the people that supposedly had, had that photo uh, from years ago, um, we're still trying to track that down, but I guess there may be something that shows actually the moving from one side to the other. That was done by the Legion. Regardless, we, we, we have uh, committed financially to the building, we'll do that in the future. Um, we did a lot more work when we were younger. I'm one of the younger folks of the Legion right now, 
and I've been advised by my family not to try to shingle myself outside. So, um, and I'm not sure I, I, I'd be up to it anyways, to be honest with you anymore. So we, we do need some help from a cost standpoint, but I think from the York Commission standpoint, we'd be very open to uh, invite folks in, take a look at it. Uh, maybe after you look at it, you might have some suggestions as well. Uh, we did meet, uh, Garrett uh, was on a, uh, a Zoom meeting, I uh, can't remember the day now, Garrett, it was last week. Last week, yeah, yeah, CPC, the CPC. Yeah, and, and CPC, you know, we're, they, they, their members are very supportive. We had sent them some additional paperwork. There's a form that we filled out in terms of a much more detailed history than, than what I've given you here tonight and, and that what uh, uh, Bill has shared. But that kind of gives you an overview of, of what we're doing. Um, and Ed's here, he certainly uh, has more history with, with the Legion than I do. Uh, I'm a youngster from the Legion standpoint. So uh, from our standpoint, uh, we like the building. We, we have a lot of pride in the building. It's uh, been very involved uh, as a community resource, uh, certainly in the 50s, 60s, and 70s in particular. Um, I, you know, I got out of the service in 1971, uh, but even then it was still being used in, in uh, different activities from scouting to, to uh, family get-togethers. Uh, there were folks that had you know, wedding receptions they didn't live in that end of town. So it, what we do is, we, we, you know, off and on we'll do some, uh, some rental expense upstairs to cover some of the heating costs and those kinds of things, but it's pretty much set up as on a need basis for, for the community. Right now we're using it, and the Coast Guard Auxiliary is using it as well. We're working with them. Uh, Vietnam Veterans America, who I'm also a member of, of, of that organization, had used it for a number of years. They moved down the street uh, in Fall River now, just over the, the line, because they have representatives within Fall River and in the region. It's a kind of a Bristol County group, as opposed to just Westport. Um, there are over 900 veterans in Westport. There are 104 that are uh, members of the American Legion. So it's a pretty active group, except that we can't get in the building that we we're supposed to be holding our meetings in. Um, so it's uh, been limited to some degree. I'm sure that's not the only reason that the attendance has dropped off, but it would help if we could at least provide better access uh, to the public, number one. And in doing so, uh, we want to maintain it in a way that uh, represents uh, our community and something that we'd all be proud of as we point to it as a one-room schoolhouse in the north end of town. I'll stop at that point. Ed, I don't know if you want to. No, you, you pretty well covered it. Uh... Okay, thank you, Tony. Could, could I ask just a few questions? What, what's in the basement of, or, or the first floor of the building? I, I, I took a picture of it, and I thought I included it in, in those pictures there, but let me show it to you in here. This was a, a celebration of the 100th year mm -hmm. for the American Legion, and I think we've got some pictures inside here. It basically, we're holding the meetings now. There's, there's a, uh, years ago, there was a kitchen put in. Let me, let me leave that mm -hmm. for you folks as well. Let me see if I can find the other thing. Uh, downstairs, it's, it's a, 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 a cemented floor with tile on, on top of the cement. And uh, that's in the uh, kind of the east side of it and the west side of the building. We've, we've doubled the size of the building, as you can see. The piece that was moved was just that straight piece in the front of the building, the one room schoolhouse. We did uh, double the size by putting a back to it and also uh, below it. So downstairs, presently, we have about, I don't know, 10 tables uh, with chairs on them. Uh, and we have a commercial kitchen that hasn't been used probably about six, seven years anyways. Hmm. Uh, there was a lot of um, breakfasts, dinners, that kind of deal that the uh, veterans would put on. Um, it's also downstairs that we had our uh, voting precinct. And people would go in that side door and they go out the, the opposite door. Um, to go out the opposite door, that's not handicap accessible either. And that was one of the issues recently with the uh, using it as a precinct until we did something with the you know, access in and out of the building. But that's where the two bathrooms are too. That's, that's the other remaining pieces downstairs. Uh, so, but Garrett, it, I'd love to have you come by. I mean, we mm -hmm. can uh, meet you at a particular time and date and, and, and anybody else that's on the committee. Uh, Carolyn, uh, if, if you're interested or anybody would love to just have sh show you the building. It's part of our community. If you haven't seen it, it'd be kind of fun just to get some of the history of it. We've got pictures. One of them, actually, is this gentleman right over here. He was one of the commanders, uh, Mr. Earl, Milton Earl. Milton Earl was a commander in the early 1900s um, at, at uh, the uh, American Legion Hall. And uh, we have his picture when he was in the service as well. And, and so 
we go back to a, a real history of, of uh, community leaders in, in uh, certainly in the north end of town. Milton Earl, I don't think, lived in the north end of the town. I always think of Milton Earl as living down the point. So, and it's certainly his family, Richie Earl, uh, you folks may know that's, that's his dad. Hmm. Uh, Rich, uh, Milton Earl's Richie's dad. So, so there's, a, there's a rich history of our community and, uh, in the north end. Um, this is something that has been maintained. If you look at the pictures, did, did I give you any pictures of inside the building there? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The, uh, I mean, it's, it's well maintained inside. Yeah, it looks yeah, very nice. It's beautiful. Yeah, and, and I think Bill had an opportunity to see the second floor. I think you saw the first floor too. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and uh, again, the commercial kitchen hasn't been used. It can be, um, mm -hmm. but we haven't done anything recently with it because of the access part of it. Mm -hmm. We pretty much have limited it just to, to meetings until we address the situation. Now, there has been attempts uh, with CPC to address the, uh, the handicap accessibility part of it. And one of the concerns there had to do uh, more with the, um, how it was done in, in terms of whether we were going to put elevators in there or not. Um, I did look at the uh, uh, head uh, area where the uh, watershed alliance is now, and they have a, uh, you know, an elevator within that building. I think it's very, you know, very nice. I think it's appropriate. Uh, I, I'm not sure it would work for this particular building unless we did something inside the building, and which would add to the cost associated with it. If we did it outside, it'd take it away from the appearance of the one-room schoolhouse part of it, which is the front of the building. So because of those two concerns, we, in the, uh, the use of it and the maintenance uh, cost associated with it, um, I, I would think you know, it, it became less appealing, uh, certainly to the American Legion anyways, to look at that as an option. Uh, we do have a couple of contractors that uh, we expect to hear within this week, uh, prices. We were planning on presenting everything at once with the price structure part of it, um, but um, I called Rudd, I think Friday after the meeting with CPC, they asked if I could try to get on the agenda. I thought we were gonna meet in like November or December, and he suggested just come in, but folks who are aware of it and, and maybe we should let everybody know, you know, what, what the situation is. So again, that's kind of the, the overview of it. And uh, we're both here, uh, Ed O'Hara and, and myself, to answer any questions you may have or uh, do any follow-up that you'd like us uh, to do. Tony, um, you had mentioned that you were very um, conscious of the um, National Park uh, Restoration Standards for antique buildings. Um, I, I don't know that I did that. Uh, I, I'm concerned about it. I, I have a doctorate in education. My whole background has been in education. Well, but the, beyond that, I, I, in terms of the standards. Well, there are um, standards for, right. uh, from the federal government and the national park take care of a lot of buildings and they have a uh, standard which is used throughout the history. Oh, I thought you were talking related to the school itself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, mainly, we are concerned with the school. Structurally, the basement and everything is all in good condition. So what we're concerned with here, with this commission, is the um, pre preservation of that exterior. Yep. The preservation yep. of the, uh, uh, all of the fabric of that building. And also we have to think about their maintenance and on into the future. Um, as far as the handicap access, I th myself, I totally, agree that that's what should be done. It should be in the front, right there. It's not going to really be a detriment to the building itself. I mean, the building was raised up high like that, and there's nothing else you can do. So now, um, Tony, you're saying your designer is going to uh, come back to us with a design for that. Do you well have a design? Things. or do we, we have one, we're looking for another. Uh, I can share the one that we had earlier. Uh, this was basically, again, that they had a, uh, an attempt to use the uh, north end of the building. With all due respect, I'm not sure I want to have a ramp in the north end of the building uh, in the winter time. Um, so I'm trying to just kind of reverse that. You can't do that as easily if you look at the photos on the uh, south end of the building. But that ramp that they have there now, I don't think, you know, uh, with all due respect, I don't know, you know, I'm open, but uh, Tony, if, if you have to maintain it in the north end of the building, it's not the best. I'd like to have the sun shine on it in the winter time. So, this, so in other words, Tony, this ramp is on the north side of the building. 
that as proposed, that's what they were saying. Yeah. Uh, Tony, uh, when we met, I mentioned as a model for this, the Ecoxit Chapel. Yes. In Westport Harbor. Yes. Um, have your designer look at that because that was approved by this commission. Although this is a higher, the grade is much higher. So uh, you would be making it more complex, but I think that could be fine the way they did that. Yeah. Uh, um, That's the, actually the very nice. The, the, hmm? That's very nice. Yeah. Oh, it's an excellent. I mean, they did a super. We'll, we'll definitely take a look at that. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have them drive down and we'll talk about that. Uh, the, the challenge is the, every foot out, you know, there's an inch to every yeah, foot. Yeah. So when you get into the, to the layout of it, uh, we've looked at one that comes straight out with a, with a uh, as it is now, with, with kind of an outside deck to it. And then um, maybe going on both sides so it, it kind of looks a little bit better than just one side or the that's other. That's the way the Ococcus chapel yeah. is. Yeah, and, and that's the way that's being designed now. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how much we would use the north side, but maybe we could do that a little different with stairs or whatever. But so it kind of looks, we want something that looks very presentable from the road. So if people drive by it, they say, well, that's, that's a one-room schoolhouse. You know, that's the front of it. Still maintain that way. So um, we, also, we don't want to take away from it by any access to the building part of it. I, I'm not saying, I mean, that's a, that's a great, I appreciate people doing that, but it's just, I was just trying to think about maintaining that in the winter time. And, I, and if that's the only one we're going to have for a ramp to go in, and it's on the north side, I think it'll defeat the purpose a little bit for access because I think people would be afraid to use it for the weather. As far as materials on that ramp, you can look also at the Ecoxit Chapel, where okay. that's done with a um, special kind of wood for the decking and so on. Yep, thank you. Would, would, the, um, would the front door have to be enlarged for access? Uh, I think it's going to. We, oh. you know, we, uh, we haven't got that far with the front door. We got the with downstairs part of it, but certainly if somebody's coming up there with a walker, you know, if they're coming up with a wheelchair, they, they got, it, you know, it's gonna be straight. It's, it's, there's a little step up to the door, mm -hmm. so we have to raise that up anyways, and when we're doing that, I, I think we might have to make it a little bit bigger to go in. Mm -hmm. you know? what, what is this little um, um, structure on the, on the back? I guess this is the south side. What's, what's this little? Yeah, that's, this is the other access to downstairs this piece here. And one of the challenges here is you actually step down mm -hmm. to go in. Because again, to get into the floor downstairs, they have a little dugout trench where so you go down two steps and then you turn into the building. Mm -hmm. So the problem is if they did it on that side, they'd have to do, and that's why it's been a little tricky for moving how fast they move it down. Mm -hmm. Or if they move it to it, then move it back and then move it down. So, uh, and, and we do have some stairs and another one you can see. Um, so this structure is basically basically has some stairs in it. It has some stairs. It's covered inside with yeah, stairs. Yeah. Oh. And that was the problem when we used it as a voting precinct. That's the way they would go out. They would go in on, on the, uh, if you look further down, the other uh, door that's open, a steel door. They would go in that way for a voting precinct and then come out through the other way. Mm -hmm. Well, One if, way. if somebody, somebody has to walk up two or three stairs, to, 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 you know, it's kind of, you know, not right. the best. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. Having them make that turnaround there was bad, um, and I don't think it's something that, as a town, we'd want to kind of support going forward. I mean, we do it for veterans, but I wouldn't want to do it for a uh, voting precinct. And uh, Tony, uh, with the, if you, you were talking about it going on down on both sides, so you have the stairway going up in front and then the ramp on the side, like the, the Copes of Chapel. Yeah, I, I think uh, they actually would, would, would you put in a retaining wall then? There is. I mean, a retaining wall and fill in there so you would bring it up higher uh, and then it would drop down to your parking lot. Yes, there is a retaining wall there now. I don't know if you remember that, but you do have to climb up. When you go into the front before you go up those stairs, there's three stairs on each side that you walk up. It's already been raised. Yeah, but and what, what he's doing is there's one platform now and he's thinking about stepping down with the stairs to another platform, mm -hmm. and then as the stairs go out, tying it in and having so it's gonna it's gonna look a little bit more outside, mm -hmm. you know. You get, but it's not gonna take away from the building itself because it's gonna be below the building, mm -hmm. it's gonna be on the cement area. So that is the only drawing we have today, and, and mm -hmm. uh, that's the one that you know we it's an option, but we think we can do better. So you'd be coming out here like the Ecosia Chapel, mm -hmm. um, and if the grade is brought up in a retaining wall put here. 
drop down here that would build that grade up so it isn't slanting down. Where are the, um, ba where are the bathrooms, Tony? Downstairs. Are those, are those stairs? Yeah, downstairs. Behind huh. the stairs next to the kitchen? Uh, just as you go in to the left. There's a stairwell behind it. I don't know if you've ever been that way because that goes up into the back of the stage. Yeah. But there is stairs as you walk in the building and then it turns. Goes up maybe, I don't know, maybe what, 10, 10 stairs and then turns to the right. Let me see the picture of uh, Tony? Yes. Um, uh, when you do your presentation, your formal presentation here, it would be a very good idea to have um, a, um, a number of these, well, just a few, you know, so we can help you make your selection. Oh, you know, ra yeah. Rather than coming in with just one, come in with, you know, three maybe or four different variations that we could look at. What I just uh, handed out there was a picture before we did the elevation in the front, as you're talking about the retainer wall. Hmm. It, it was a much steeper entrance to the front back in the uh, 30s and early 40s. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I guess probably, uh, Ed, you would know better than I, in the 50s maybe? Yeah. yeah. In, uh, somewhere in, we're guessing around the 1950s, they put retainer walls in, they had steps in the front, Mm -hmm. And then they went out to some monuments and, and uh, with a uh, flagpole. It so it's up. already been elevated somewhat it on both sides. It used to be you could drive right around the front. You can't do that now because the retainer walls and the elevation is already up like four feet. And it wouldn't be grading down towards it. Right, right. Uh, Tony? Yes. If the retaining wall, I know you have a retaining wall of concrete here, but if you had the retaining wall go at right angles to it, so if it came, what I'm at. came out, you had a retaining wall that came out. The retaining out. wall came out here. Yep. In that direction, and then fill all that in there. So it would really help. So you bring then the, drop down to the parking lot. Yep. Bring, bring the grade up to the porch level, basically? Well, you could, you could really slant that grade up enough to take some of the edge off of that steep, uh, you know, that, that run that you have to have for the handicap yep. hitch. No, I, I would agree, and we're attempting to do that now, but the pitch is pretty dramatic on, on, if you look at this photo here. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if they'll come back exactly like that because of the pitch, but that's certainly what we're attempting to do, mm -hmm. is trying to dress it up. Uh, and trying to minimize the, the run on that. Yes, and, and it, you know, it's difficult to do with the, because it's so high. So, mm -hmm. um, and you need to have it up to the, the, the door level. You know, for the entrance part of it, anyway. See that part of it too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right now, yeah. that it sits down below. That has to be level with the door. Yeah. Right. Is Is there any any parking back in in this area? Uh this this parking all around the building. So yeah, this this is good. all paved uh, all around here. Oh uh, no, it's not paved. It's not paved. It's no. just no. just grass. Oh uh, no, it is it, gravel. It's gravel. Yeah. gravel over the years. Uh, uh -huh. We've never paved it actually. We've kind of kept it open. Uh, it. Looks like. Build. But you still got to get from this grade all the way up there. Yeah. At, at, a, at, a, at a, you know, prescribed. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why that. But it, this is even more dramatic for you in terms of what it looked like years ago. That, that shows ground level. That is the ground level. <laughs> you see? And we've already raised it four feet plus. I'm yeah. sorry, Carolyn, I should have oh, set it up with you. They, they have raised that up. Uh -huh. Yeah. They have right. something in front. I mean, I don't know when that picture was taken, but it might be on the back of it. It might say, I, but it's. Would. You see, Bob. Yeah. yeah. These are great photos. They are great photos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, we we don't lack photos at the American Legion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The heiress. What I'm wondering is if if somebody's at an event, somebody with a disability is on an event on the second floor. How do they get to the bathroom on the first floor? Uh, they go outside and go down. Have to go down yeah. the ramp, down the. Yeah, we're, we're not we're not we're focusing on accessibility to the building, mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of putting bathrooms upstairs, we haven't approached putting a bathroom upstairs. We could. We actually we talked about it initially, uh, and I think Bill, you've seen it as you go upstairs where the stage is just to the side right, there. Right. We could put a bathroom in there. Uh, it would be additional expense, and I'm not sure in terms of use. The veterans don't don't feel they need it, and, and it's a, the veterans are paying the bill for the building. But we want to keep it open to the community, and so uh, there's um, I don't know 
if all those rooms uh, throughout the town, I'm thinking of the VFW, if there's a bathroom upstairs, I don't know if there is or not, but, um, but our idea is to keep it uh, that way without putting an uh, additional expense involved upstairs. Now, if the community wanted to do that, if the uh, town felt it was you know, appropriate to do that and they wanted to fund that, we'd support that 100% if they wanted to do it. But we just didn't think we'd get the use for it. Uh, right now, our biggest deal are people carrying oxygen, you know, uh, on wheels and then walkers. Uh, once in a while, I have somebody in with it with a, uh, uh, you know, a chair, wheelchair, but that's usually, um, that's limited. Uh, but we do think we could use it as, as a meeting room upstairs. Our, we, our meetings are like an hour. You know. Well, I haven't been there in a long time, but I would think that if you, way in the back, if you would take out those bathrooms and relocate them somewhere else, then you could build a straight ramp from the parking lot level right into the kitchen meeting room area. That would be a quick and easy. Well, just cut well, a big Bob, hole. one of the challenges with a straight a ramp hole. is you, you every you, by going up, you know, well, I mean, a foot at a time. Thing. You know, you, you've got to come into a situation where I don't know if it's ten feet or twelve feet. You've got to stop and then turn the angle. You just can't go straight down. You know, so. Get the angle, it's the yeah, corner so, of the building. Yeah, I'm, you, you can, anything's possible. Uh, it's just the structure associated with it, the cost. And again, one of the areas of that end of town in the location of that building is that um, we want to have it accessible, certainly for the American Legion, but for the community. But we don't want it to be something that's going to be a, a maintenance issue in the winter time. Um, we plow it. Uh, we, we could certainly shovel in that kind of situation. But I am concerned that if we don't have the natural elements out there, we don't have the sun shining on it in the daytime with a ramp, uh, we're, we're kind of discouraged about that because we just don't think how doable that's going to be for the use that we're going to get out of it. What, what's in the two wings behind the stage? The building is, is T-shaped, what's, what's in these? The stage is in the middle, it goes the whole length of the building, and then uh, there's a stairwell. Let me, let me show you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, I can yeah, see the, yeah. This, the, it, yeah. the stage. This, is, this was all added on, okay, and it's two levels. There's a room here, and there's a room on this end. And this mm -hmm. is the room that we were talking about, about putting the bathrooms in. Mm -hmm. And the contractors, the plumbers that came in, suggested, well, why would you want to put them upstairs anyways and take away for it? Because they use it, when using the stage, you, that's a, like a, an area that they would use to come onto the stage, mm -hmm. and the same thing with that. The stairwell that, that Bob was talking about is if you come in in the lower level here, mm -hmm. there's a stairwell behind the bathrooms that come upstairs into the stage. So it's, uh, and then down in this area on the lower level, that's where the, the uh, uh, commercial kitchen is. Mm -hmm. And then all this level here, the whole length is where the tables are on both sides, they're, they're pillars downstairs. And then there are uh, tables on both sides. Of mm -hmm. And I can next time I come, I can I'll bring some pictures of uh, downstairs. I had my, I must have sent them on to the uh, CPC. Well, Tony, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I think we've got enough information right now, and we're just looking forward to you uh, coming back with your presentation. Uh, certainly, we want to know about materials as well. Have you worked with uh, the yellow cedar on any other projects in town to date? Do you know? Not on town buildings, but okay. um, uh, the, there are three types of cedar that are used. Yep. There's the red cedar, which turns a brown color. There's the white cedar, which is the regular one that everyone is using. And it lasts, I'm thinking, say, I'm thinking of longevity for that building and the maintenance you've been talking about to me. Uh, and the yellow cedar, uh, it holds up very, very well and much longer than white cedar. It's also used on roofs. What Red color? cedar is used on roofs and yellow cedar. But what does yellow cedar evolve into? Great, it looks just like. Yeah. White cedar? Yeah, exactly oh. like it. What it is, it's from a, a, a wood on the West Coast, uh, which is um, an actual cypress. It's a form of cypress. Yep. They call it yellow cedar. 
And our thought there, Carolyn, it, it'll look uh, more like a one-room schoolhouse aspect of it, uh, as opposed to getting into the painting and maintenance of it. And, you know, paint just doesn't hold up, uh, you know, either. And so we're going to paint the trim. Uh, I didn't mention that. That's around the windows there is a trim. You can see it's um, so we'll um, scrape that down and repaint that as well. Um, so it's the longevity of the yellow cedar, but much longer. And that's why they're even using it on roofs now. And it's being used everywhere. Hmm. It's expensive, though. Well. So is red. Yeah. The, red, the, the two cedars that are about the same price are red cedar and yellow cedar. But the yellow doesn't turn brown the way the right. the red cedar does. Right. right. Well, something so to keep in mind for my house. I mentioned it was yeah. the longevity and the fact that they didn't want to have to redo something in right. in, in 25 years. Uh, just to, uh, if I can make a point, just a, a historical point, uh, that building was also one of the first uh, used by the town. To broadcast meetings. I don't know if you know that. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, there is still equipment up in that room. Yeah. Well, I'd like to invite our uh, person who's taping uh, this meeting here. It's still stuck up in the wall. I, I, they had a glass front on it, and they could see what was going on on the stage it's upstairs. Hmm. And they broadcast a live program. From <laughs> so that's going back a few years. And one of the first. Uh, I was interviewed. There. You were interviewed oh, yeah. there, sir. Yeah. 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 2014 when my book came out. Sir, I, I don't know your name, uh, the gentleman that's taping uh, our show, but if you if you wanted to mention the valve, um, we have pieces of equipment that have been there. We've mentioned it a few times in the past from cable. Probably not being used. Maybe it's uh, oh, obsolete, I'm, I'm sure. sure but if there's any use for the town on it, if they want to see it or whatever, we'd gladly you know, uh, work with you on that and take well, that down. I'd have to take that up. Sure. You know, even from a school standpoint, maybe the school might be interested in right. the history of some yeah, how, how we how cable worked in town and so forth. You know, but it so is there. Extracurriculars that's offered there. That's a possibility, definitely. So I'll definitely pick it up with them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it was the it, first it, it, station. It, first were you interviewed uh, upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. In that room? Yeah. Okay. George yeah. Catalano. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be honest with you, you asked, I can't remember who asked the question initially. Uh, at one point, I guess it was the officers used it as their their, uh, their office. I guess you know um, we haven't done that though. Uh, so it's I, I think probably it, we haven't used it in that capacity for quite some time. We have some file cabinets on, on the one that's on the north uh, side, um, but it, it uh, the, the last activity that was there was the Christmas party probably about four or five years ago. One of the things that Legion uh, would do would have a Christmas party for folks, all the youngsters and so forth that. Or in the neighborhood, or whatever, and, and uh, have pictures of that. Um, and um, some of the storage of the Christmas stuff was in one of those rooms. Uh, when the Vietnam Veterans of America were there, they, they had some storage areas in there as well. But it's been used more as storage upstairs, except the, the stage and the auditorium. It's, it's just, I mean, it's beautiful. It, it's, you know, it's well maintained. Um, the floors are, are spotless. Um, and uh, it's a shame not to have the community use that. You know, even if it's just a, a family get together that they needed some additional space and needed the parking and so forth, it's available for them. Um, so we weren't intending on putting up, uh, we had talked about it originally from, from the uh, veteran standpoint, putting bathrooms upstairs. And we just felt for the use of the building and how we proceeded going forward that it was an expense that we didn't want to, we didn't feel we could absorb it and, and we just didn't want to ask the town for that. So. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, since we have no other business on the agenda, I could ask for a motion for adjournment. I so I, move. I had a couple of things I wanted oh, to yeah. mention, but I think it might be better if I if I wait and mention them when, when we have the Definitely. Full Definitely. So, oh. yeah, yeah. When we have a full... Uh, and this one, too. Bill, you can't make any motions. Hmm? You can't make any motions. I can't make a motion. We just... Dissolve. Yeah. Just dissolve. Okay. 